What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. Well, if all has gone according to plan, then by the time you're watching this video, my baby girl has already arrived into this world, which is so exciting, but I'm filming this while I'm still 35 weeks pregnant. In fact, I've pre-recorded tons of videos so that you know, you'll know you be seeing uh, pregnant Marie in the next couple months worth of videos rather than postpartum Marie. Whenever postpartum Marie feels ready to give you an update video, she will, she will keep you posted. Is it weird that I'm talking about myself in the third person? Yeah, probably. But enough of that because for now it's story time and it's a fun one because this is a legit nightmare of a story from the first time that I rented a full-time office while in private practice. So I'm looking forward to sharing this story. Hopefully it's entertaining on one level, but, but also more importantly, hopefully you learn from my mistakes so you don't have to repeat what I went through. So if you'd like to hear about the time I got kicked out of my full-time therapy office, then just keep watching. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. And today we are legitimately talking about things I learned the hard way because yes, you heard me correctly, I got kicked out of my therapy office. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I got kicked out of my first full-time therapy office in private practice just four months after I moved in. But in retrospect, there were some significant red flags giving me warnings along the way that I just did not pay attention to. So let's get into the story. As a little bit of context for the backdrop of this moment, which happened in 2017, Let's rewind back to 2012, which is when I started in private practice as a postdoc intern. I was postdocing in San Francisco while living in San Jose, which if you're not from the area is a pretty significant commute. I loved working in that office so much that once I got licensed in 2014 as a psychologist, I kept on commuting up to that same office in San Francisco two days a week and those two days were full. I was seeing anywhere between like 12 and 15 clients a week in that office location. But in 2016, I decided it might be nice to work a little bit closer to where I lived, so I decided to start subletting an office near where I lived in my city of San Jose one day a week while I still had my two days a week that I was commuting up to San Francisco, I started building up my caseload in San Jose. And after a few months, I was ready to add on a second day of subletting, but the office that I was subletting from, as much as I liked it, didn't have any of the days available that I wanted. And so began my search on Craigslist for an office to sublet from. And then lo and behold, while I was doing this quest around November of 2016, I found what seemed to be the perfect full-time office on Craigslist and it said that it would be available starting in May. So I thought May is like six months away. Maybe I might be able to build up to renting this perfect full-time office in May by the time May rolls around. So let me go check it out. So I coordinated with the landlord to go see this office thinking I got six months runway and maybe I could be full-time in San Jose by May of 2017. But then I went to go see the office and it was totally empty and I was confused. Like, why is it not yet available when it looks, you know, vacant right now. So I asked the landlord and he said, oh, actually, I just reused the same Craigslist ad that I posted from last May. Somebody had come into the office and had since left within the last six months or so. And so he just reposted the same Craigslist ad that he had used before that said it was available in May, but actually it's available right now. Woo! Now in retrospect, this might have been a good opportunity for me to learn more about why that person left the office I didn't ask at the time. There may have been some red flags already available to me, but I was so excited because it really seemed like the perfect office space that checked all of the boxes that I needed from a full-time office. So I let the landlord know, you know, I'm so sorry. I saw on your listing that it said it would be available in May full-time, and I think I might be available to be here full-time starting in May, but I'm not yet able to commit to a full-time office right now. So I was very upfront. And to my surprise, he said, oh, well, no worries. We can just 
prorate your rent if you're able to commit now, and then we'll just slowly scale your rent upwards so that by the time you get to May, it'll then be at its full price. This sounded too good to be true, didn't it? That's because it was, <laughs> but I had my, you know, naive, super excited to be able to access a full-time office blinders on, and this seemed like such a great deal to me. In fact, he was willing to prorate the first month of rent all the way down to $300 a month, which at that time was about the cost of subletting an office two days a week. And the idea was that I could move in in January of 2017, start at paying only 300 a month and have it scale up little by little every month. And by the time we got to May, it would be its full price of $600 a month, which back in 2016, you could rent a full-time office in San Jose for around 600 to $700 a month. So that seemed to be reasonable. Now, since I hadn't been planning on signing a lease for a full-time office right away, I did have the wherewithal to ask to go home and sit on it for a couple of days, think through it. I really did budget everything out. Mind you, I was seeing 20 to 15 clients a week in San Francisco. So even at the full price, I would be able to very reasonably fund paying for this full-time office and furnish it at that time. So after all of that is said and done, I agreed to sign the lease according to the plan that he named. But here I was, I felt like I'd finally made it to my dream. And in January of 2017, with all of my new furniture in hand, I moved into my new full-time office at my super pro-rated price and I loved it. And as far as I knew, everything was great. I kept growing my practice, adding new marketing strategies to, to my toolbox, building my client caseload. I paid my rent early every month. I checked in with my landlord every month. Is everything going okay? Everyone else I worked with was super nice. It was what I thought it would be. I loved it so much. Fast forward to April, everything was going great and we were getting to the end of our initial contract where I was in May going to finally be paying the full price for this office space, which again was $600. So in mid-April, I checked in with the landlord just saying, you know, hey, is everything going okay? I'm planning on renewing my lease at the full price after May. Are there any changes or updates you wanna make? And he was just super nice saying, you know, I've been such a great tenant, always paying on time, blah, blah, blah. Great. Now at some point around here in the timeline, one of the tenants who was working just down the hall from me decided to move out. But after she moved out, I remember my landlord started showing the space to other potential tenants and he would share with me how surprised he was by how many people seemed to be interested in the space and how much more money the space was going for than it used to. And I did a little snooping and he'd posted the space for like $700 a month and that space was smaller than my office, which was definitely the nicer one of the two. And mind you, I was only paying $600 for this space. All of this is happening in the context of 2017, where stuff in San Jose was really quickly getting a lot more expensive. That same office space would easily go for $1,000 or maybe more today. So it was just skyrocketing at that point in time. Now, I didn't think too much of this, but I just figured oh, whenever it was time to renew my lease, he'd probably raise my rent pretty significantly because yeah, at this point, $600 was quite cheap, even though it was only a few months after I moved in. So I kind of mentally prepared for paying, you know, $700 or more for the same office space. But at this point, I was able to afford that. It was right after all of this happened, well, it was still April 2017, that my husband and I went on a two-week trip to Japan. The day we got to Japan, I checked my email, super jet-lagged, and I have an email from my landlord saying I need to move out in May. No explanation why. So I, I was overcome with a lot of very upset, overwhelmed feelings because I was completely sideswiped. I loved this office. I was willing to pay more money for it. I just didn't understand what was going on at all. And I was freaking out because here I am on vacation in Japan. And for all I know, when I come back, I basically don't have an office anymore. And what am I gonna do with my caseload of clients? <laughs> like just such a nightmare. And so I say, well, is there any way I can extend it even just by an extra month? 
Um, is there any way I can pay extra for this space? And he was just like, nope, it's been great, but you need to move out. And I think I may have even emailed him one last plea of just saying, you know, I'm gonna be in Japan for the next two weeks. It's gonna be really hard to find a lease while I'm out. Is there any way you can accommodate me? And it was just like, nope, good luck, you're great. <sighs> now here's what I think really happened. Um, this landlord, when I was first signing the lease, was desperate to get this space filled, so desperate that he was willing to prorate rent just to like lock in somebody paying something for this otherwise empty space. And then when he realized that within the span of less than six months, the same space was in high demand for much more money, he started advertising the space at a much higher price and locked in a lease with somebody before checking in with me to see if I would be able to sign a lease at that higher price. And that's the only way I can explain the reasoning on why I needed to get out ASAP. He couldn't even extend it by a week. Um, he must have had somebody already signed on a new lease at a higher price. <laughs> What a nightmare. What I did was I made an agreement with my husband that every morning while we were in Japan, I would spend an hour looking for an office space. I got up at 5 a.m. every morning and scoured Craigslist for an hour and contacted as many places as I could. And honestly, there was only one viable office space that I could find in that entire time that met my criteria, my checklist. Oh, I signed that lease and I moved in May 2017 and I have still been in the same office space since then. I can't believe it's already been four years. Oh, but that office space has just been a wonderful oasis for me and for my clients. Of course, as these things go, it wound up just being a much healthier environment to work in. It's almost all therapists and there's a couple of lawyers and it's just... It worked out for the best. And the rest is history. I love this office. I was able to basically keep all the same furniture and design and just plop it into the new office, which was bigger with more light and nicer on so many levels. And there was no gaps in treatment for my clients. And all of my clients, of course, were like, oh my gosh, this place is so much nicer than your last one, <laughs> which it is so much nicer. Oh, I'm so grateful it worked out, but man, that was a nightmare while it lasted. It got me to where I am today and I'm glad it all worked out, but uh, if I had just my head on a little bit more straight, I think I could have caught some of those warning signs early on. That about sums up my nightmare. And also I hope if you are looking for an office, just keep an eye out. I haven't even mentioned just how many scams I would find on Craigslist that were much more obvious scams from the get-go, but there's all kinds of stuff going on out there. And so just be careful. And before closing this video, I would like to thank therapynotes.com for sponsoring this video. Of all the things that could be a nightmare when it comes to private practice, like finding an office in this unfortunate example, managing your practice does not have to be a nightmare and Therapy Notes makes it so easy to stay on top of all of your practice management tasks, from scheduling to notes to billing, to their HIPAA secure telehealth platform, which is included for free for all users. If you'd like to check out Therapy Notes, you can try it for free for two months with no commitment, just by clicking the link in the description of this video. Whew, I'm feeling a little like, you know, <laughs> agitated after going back and revisiting that story. But I hope you learned some things hearing my story. Let me know if you've been through similar nightmare stories with your office in the comments below so that hopefully at the very least other people can learn from what we've been through by reading through it. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well. This thing, what is this thing? Why are you here? I just,